basketball fans welcome back so Davin Ham is confident on the Lakers squad that made the trade speculation so the trade deadline is right it's fast approaching and it's right around the corner and coming off following up the team's victory today morning snapping the OKC Thunder's four game winning streak I mean the Lakers are just good you know coming off um, losing two straight like that wasn't the greatest look for the Lakers and we were just at an all-time low and this win was good 112 105 over the Thunder and coach Davin Ham he he's he was under like the pressure to be able to like win the games and be able to like try to find some consistency because a lot of reports were pointing towards he, his job being potentially at risk and the trade deadline will just reveal to us a lot because right now I've seen a couple of players put on the trade deadline so put on the chopping block so I've seen Austin Reeves and Rui, Ch Rui Hachimura so Austin Reeves is a special case because even I made a video uh, talking about how the Lakers are unwilling to trade away Austin Reeves from the Lakers and right now you can see it's just um, you know it's just the optics just winning games if they're able to win games consistently hopefully they can be able to like retain some of the people that they are saying that they are going to you know trade for and the sad, the sad thing about the Lakers is they have uh, players on max they have LeBron and AD taking up majority of the cap space and majority of the players that are on one year deals so it's very difficult to find a trade partner especially to get the most value when teams when the team like even half of the team uh, is signed to one year deals so there's no easy way to be able to just trade away a player there are people who are you know getting like you know 2 million 2.5 3 3 million dollars so it's not a more, lot of money that you know you're trying to say that you want to cut salary so there's not much that the Lakers can do to retool because majority of the players in there like mostly half of them they're on those one year you know mid-level deals so pulling a trigger on a trade you have to have somebody who is on a 10 or even nine or a million plus of that range or even eight and they are not offering like a lot of value in there so you know something like that so i was surprised to see the lakers you know put austin reeves in there because i even made a video saying that he the lakers are unwilling to trade him but anyway it's a business at the end of the day so following the lakers 112 105 victory over the oklahoma city thunder assistant coach davin harm Express confidence with the, Lake, with the current Lakers squad had missed ongoing trade speculation. So Harm's comments after the game, after a game where AD he had 27 points and 15 boards, LeBron 25 points, lead the Lakers to snap the Thunder's four-game winning streak. So Davin Harm he was actually quite optimistic. He said, I have, I have, "We have more than enough in that locker room to make some things happen." So this statement, the way he made it was kind of um, open-ended because I don't know what he means make some things happen is it make the trades happen is it make it to the finals happen so I'm not sure because a lot of times uh, you can see these statements that are just left and they're just you know some statements are just open-ended when they say that so I, I, I didn't I didn't uh, didn't want to take much time reading into it because I know a coach he has to do his job he has to make sure that his organization that he's coaching for has some success not only in the regular season but also in the playoffs and also just following up the fact that the lakers made the west finals last postseason so they have to like at least try to see if they can push this team to at least make get to that point and also potential yeah. excuse me potentially make the finals so the lakers despite facing struggles in recent games managed to secure a crucial win with a formidable opponent d'angelo russell played a key role with 14 points and seven assists and the lakers demonstrated resilience in the fourth because majority of the time i've seen them drop the games in the second half which is actually quite concerning the victory holds significance for the lakers as they embark on a two-week stretch without leaving Los Angeles so they're just playing at home so Anthony Davis has previously emphasized the importance of this six game sequence before the team's 
playoff contention hopes. So the Lakers have faced challenges, including injuries and inconsistent scoring outside of LeBron and AD, which is something that the Lakers front office must figure out very fast. But Darvin Ham's confidence in the current roster suggests a belief in their ability to navigate these issues. So we have a very big problem in LA. Outside of LeBron and AD, who can we go to? Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, Christian Wood, Torian Prince, uh, who else? Max Christie. So who else can we go to outside LeBron and AD? Let's say LeBron and AD sit out. Who can we go to to like at least hold the fort? So that's the problem. So despite the trade rumors circulating around the Lakers, Ham's comments indicate that the coaching staff has faith in the existing roster's potential. The Lakers have experienced ups and downs this season, including a recent skid, but securing a win against the Thunder serves as like a morale boost. So the thing is, I, I really sometimes I really don't like the Lakers because most of the time they they try to look for quick fixes and they try to you know uh, do some you know image management. They just don't want to look like they are bad, but they are bad. So one thing that they need to address is just focusing on how to win games. That's the thing that they need to do. Regardless of whichever productiv- what, what productivity comes from which player, they have to figure out a way to be able to be productive and win and be ahead in the win columns because right now they're just, uh, they're just teetering at uh, you know 500 and they need to at least win games. So the thing that I, 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 really, I really look at is like what are they going to do in the trade deadline? Because if uh, if they decide to trade away uh, at Austin Reeves, who are they gonna get back? I saw a trade proposal where the Lakers have said they're not gonna trade away Austin Reeves for Dejounte Murray. Let's say for example they give away Austin Reeves and give bring in Dejounte Murray. Will he help? Will he help the team? Because majority of the time I figure out. I think. I sometimes I sit down and just try to you know figure out what the Lakers are thinking, but it's very difficult because the guy that is likely to get traded in the trade deadline is D'Angelo Russell. He has been in the in the chopping block for some time now, even before like even midway into the season, not even midway, but at the start of the season when he was you know uh, not playing well. I just saw a situation where he's gonna get traded in the trade deadline. So D'Lo is one of that guy that I've seen. Uh, he's going to be on there on the chopping block. So the thing is, as the trade deadline approaches, the Lakers will need to carefully consider any potential moves while also recognizing their strengths within their current lineup. The focus of the team's internal capabilities and resilience demonstrated against the Thunder reflects a positive outlook as they aim to solidify their position in the Western Conference. So the Lakers still need shooting and defense, something that they need to fi- figure out a way. And and I'm not sure, man, because outside of LeBron and AD, who, who can they turn to? While Davin Ham is expressing confidence in the current Lakers squad, there are gra- glaring areas that require improvement, particularly in shooting and defense. Despite recent success, the Lakers find themselves at the bottom of the league in three-point attempts, racking 28 in three-point makers per game. The three-point shooting percentage starts at 35 placing them at 20th spot in the league. So you can see they're not able to like, you know, knock down that three ball. So the deficiency three point shooting highlights a need for sharp shooters who can spread the floor and provide uh, perimeter scoring. So even if you look at the like, 2020 bubble run, if you look at the team the way you're set up, they had three point shooting. They had like guys who can shoot the ball from downtown. And they had good rebounders in the front court. So if the shots were not falling, they were able to like kick it out again to reload or take it back and, 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 and go take it down, pull it down and take it back up. So the, the, there was that possibility. So the deficiency in three-point shooting highlights a need for sharpshooters who can spread the floor and provide vari- valuable perimeter scoring. So players like Dorian Finney-Smith, Jordan Clarkson, Buddy Heels, Malcolm Brogdon and Alex Caruso, known for their three-point prowess and defensive capabilities, could be viable targets to address this issue. But I don't know if 
the Lakers have the ability to be able to like trade for these people. They don't want to give. They they really want to hold on to their draft picks. They are really hesitant to trade away their draft picks because if you look at if you do an audit and look at the AD trade to the Lakers, you see they have given away majority of their picks to the Pelicans and and they have they don't have like a lot of draft capital like that. So even in addition to their offensive struggles. I mean, uh, the Lakers also faces face challenges in the defensive end. Ranking 14th in the league, the defensive rating of 114. Strengthening their defense is crucial for the Lakers to compete at a high level, especially against formidable opponents in the Western Conference too. So, defense is also a problem because as much as we have LeBron in AD, they are asked to do other things for the team especially when it comes to the offensive load. So the defensive load, they are, the slack has to be carried by the other, other other teams, teammates. So if the other teammates are not good defensively, as much as even they drop even you know a combined 50 points, they still give away a lot of points on the defensive side of the ball. So it becomes quite difficult to be able to be two-way like that when you have a lot of load, especially on offense. So to enhance the overall team performance, the Lakers should prioritize acquiring players who can contribute to both ends of the court, a combination of shooting and defensive skills. This strategy, this strategic approach, and this strategy could involve pursuing and th- uh, pursuing three and D players who examine the perimeter uh, shooting while also bring defense to the team. You can see this the reason as to why they had Danny Green in there. So it was actually quite important. So as the trade deadline approaches, the Lakers front office may need to explore potential trades. Or signings to us to address these specific issues. So balancing the roster with players who can efficiently score from behind the arc and provide lockdown defense will be instrumental in the Lakers' quest for success and even win the West. So this is something that I even mentioned. I even saw a situation where the Lakers they just look hard capped in there. I'm not saying like they have given like. Uh, overpaid for players but they just don't have like that flexibility because there's so much expectation when it comes to like playing for the Lakers and it becomes quite difficult for a team to be able to uh, retool especially with a fan base that he really can get on you and really can turn on you if you don't produce or even provide anything winning basketball so that's all I have to say about this I'm not sure how the Lakers are going to uh, go about this whole situation I know Davin Ham is the coach and he's trying to be as positive as possible but some things are glaring he needs to find a way to you know use his use use the team the pieces that he has better and looking at um the fast approaching trade deadline who can they get given like the situation that they have because i when i look at it the the squad, the squad looks solid the only thing is the lineups and the strategies are not the greatest and that's the reason as to why they struggle in games if they can be able to find a way to like use players correctly and try to see who can we go to at this specific time and at this time who can we go to at that time let's say lebron is out let's say ad is out or let's say both of them are out who can we go to what they, what can they do with this squad so that's the biggest you know uh, question that he must answer so if you guys like the video, make sure you leave your feedback down in the comments on what you think about this whole situation. And um, I'm out. Peace.